At this point, I am going to introduce a concept called flags. In some ways, I'm a little reluctant to do this because a lot of times when you use flags, uh, it's actually an indication of sloppy programming. There may be some way that you could control the flow of the program without using a flag, but they're very convenient under certain circumstances and you will see them used. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about them. A flag is basically a variable that we use to keep track of the state of some kind of condition. Sometimes a flag will be something like a number, like what's the, what's the number we're trying to keep track of. Uh, it could also be a string, but very commonly a flag is a Boolean and it contains either a true or a false value. And so usually when we, when we use a flag, we try to design the name of the flag in such a way that the code is very readable when we are testing a condition. So let's imagine that we're writing some software that controls uh, cage, animal cages for us. And we have a detector and we have a flag that keeps track of the state of whether the door is open or not. So the variable door open is going to have a value of true if the door is open and a value of false if the door is not open. So in our code that we can check whether that has a value of true or not. If the value of door open is true, then we execute this code block, which in this case carries out some mysterious function called close, which will uh, somehow close the door for us and then returns uh, some kind of result saying whether it was successful in closing the door or not. So again, we don't know how this code works, but by cleverly naming the flag door open, the code becomes very readable. We see that if the door is open, then we should do a function that closes the door. In this code example, we have a set of numbers that we want to check. And the thing that we want to know is whether any of the numbers in that list of numbers is an even number or not. Uh, it's kind of an artificial system here to literally be typing out the numbers. It'd be more likely that the numbers would come from a file or maybe someone would type them in. But for this purpose, simply defining them to be a part of a list will be fine. So we're creating a flag called was and even. And the reason why we name it that was because the check that we're going to perform down at the end is to find out if there was an even or not. So what we are going to do basically is go through each of the numbers and check them one at a time to see if one to see if it was even or not. If we get all the way through the check and and there was not an even in there, then this will evaluate as false and it'll do the else clause and say none of your numbers was even. On the other hand, if we go through the numbers and one of them was an even, then if was an even will evaluate as true and it'll say at least one of your numbers was an even. So that's how we're going to use this flag basically to keep track of whether throughout the process any of them ever was an even or not. So how are we going to determine that? Well, we need to step through each of the numbers in the list one at a time. So this is another common uh, sort of naming paradigm where we have a list that's in the plural, and then we have an uh, iterator that is the singular. So we, um, we step through the numbers, and each number that we step through, we, get, we name its variable name number. So we'll go through each number in the list of numbers, and then we will do a comparison. So the way that you can determine whether a number is even or not is pretty easy with what we call the modulo operator. If you remember from elementary school, when you first learned how to do long division, you tried to see how many times one number would go into another. And sometimes if it didn't go in evenly, there would be a remainder. So the modulo operator simply tells us what's the remainder if we do a division operation. And it's quite easy with a modulo operator to define what an even number is. An even number is just a number that doesn't have any remainder when divided by two. If we divide four by two, it comes out evenly. But if we divide five by two, which is an odd number, we have a remainder of one. 
So we're going to go ahead and evaluate the number in our uh, iteration and what the modulo is if we divide it by two. So we'll see what that is. And then we perform a check. Is the number modulo two equal to zero? If it is, then we change the state of the flag from false, which was the state that we set it to in the beginning, to true. So we'll step through each number. If several of them are even, then wasn't even will get set to true several times. But that doesn't matter because all we care about is what is the condition at the end? Is it true at the end? On the other hand, if we step through all of the numbers and number modulo true never evaluates to be zero, then this, this statement setting the value to true will never happen and it'll remain false as it was when we began the loop. So if we manage to step all the way through all the numbers and there is never a case where the modulo is true and there's never therefore a case where was and even gets changed from false into true, then it'll remain false and it'll say none of your, none of your numbers are even. So let's go ahead and try this. So when we run the code, it evaluates three the modulo for three is one, so it's not even. But the modulo for four is zero, so it does evaluate uh, to be true. So it's going to change the value of wasn't even from false to true. Then when we do 453, that is an odd number, so the modulo is one. 99 is an odd number, its modulo is one. 19 is an odd number, its modulo is 1. 50 is an even number, its modulo is 0. So it's going to set was an evens value to true a second time. Even though it had already done it in this loop here, it'll do it again. But that doesn't matter because all we care about is does it get set to true any times at all. Now, if I go through here and change this from an odd number, from an even number to an odd number and run the code, now we see that its modulo evaluated as one, but we still had the case here where the second number in our list had a modulo of zero. So it still says at least one of your numbers was even. However, if we change that to an odd number like one and run the code, then we can see that every single time the loop evaluated, the modulo was never equal to zero. So this statement, which changes the state of the flag, never gets executed. The flag remains in its initial state, which is false. So when we do the test down here at the bottom to see whether was not even was true or false, it evaluates still as false. And so it's gonna say number, none of your numbers was even. In this code example, we named the variable was not even. And we said, let's start off with saying that none of the numbers are even, and if any of them are even, we'll change wasn't even to true. We could name things differently. We could say no evens. If we do that, then we'd start off saying there are no evens. That would be true. Then if we step through and we find that one of the numbers is even, then we would change no evens from true into false. So if we define our flag in this sort of opposite way, then our conditions that we evaluate would also be opposite. And instead of the, contr the true condition saying one of your numbers was even, the true condition is gonna say none of your numbers are even, and the false condition is going to say that at least one of your numbers is even. So there's no reason why one of these is better than the other, but it's why careful naming of your flags helps keep you from getting confused when you actually want to set the conditions because here by reading through the code we can see it makes sense if we say if no evens you should print none of your un numbers were even whereas if no evens is false then you it makes sense to say at least one of your numbers was even.